I'll be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Yes, it does. Uh, here's one thing it we does. Do. We have something working. When, when you yes. really come to understand yes. what God is doing, we can really be excited about this because see, that woman at the well represents one aspect yes. of God's own divine design. Come on now. So you see, God has created man wow. with thirst. For righteousness. Yes, sir. With a thirst to be connected back to the true soul. There's a just like that woman, just like all of us gotta have water to live. Yes, sir. Oh, come on. God has designed man in such a way that you gotta have me to live spiritually. Hey, Amen. That's a good word. So the divine see, see inherently then the gospel is going to be attracted to anybody that God can cause light to shine in the darkness to see. You, listen, you got stuff you're trying to find it in a man. Yeah. You're going through men like you're going through clothing, but what you're really looking for can't be found in that kind of thing. What you're really looking for has to come from the world. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we need to understand that that's the condition for people that we're sent to. It's people just like us. Jesus called Israel the lost seed of the house of Israel. What you black Hebrew or Jew, you are lost seed. In John 17, he told the Father, All that thou hast given me, I have lost none. Except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. God is not willing, Peter said, that any should be lost. He didn't lose him, he let him go. Yeah. <laughs> He told him, go ahead and do what you're going to do. Yes, sir. Come back and talk. So we're, we're sending the message to lost people who have deed within them, whether they're aware of it or not, that have an unquenchable desire to be reconnected to their creator. Wow. I, 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 I thank God for that because I have sit here in a lot of our discussions. We discount what our white brothers say concerning their social state. When you said we won't be replaced, these guys, a lot of these guys are fearful. A lot of you guys are seeing the turn of history. They're watching the, 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 the degradation of their group. And they are really concerned about that. They are concerned that they're going to be retaliated against. They're going to be concerned that their children are not going to be well taken care of and so forth and so on. And when we preach to them, we preach to them from perspective of animosity and, 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 and the lack of ability to identify with the point. Well, these guys ain't lying. The reality of it is they are diminishing. They're diminishing in number, they're diminishing in their influence, or even global. They're, they're, they have a negative birth rate. So when we preach to them, what compassion, what passion are we? And that's the word I just asked the Lord for, for myself. I need the passion again. I need the compassion with Jim was, 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 was preaching. I need that. And to be able to identify with where they're coming from, and to be able to preach to them, even in their hatred of me, a truth that would be able to touch their heart. So I, I don't believe that God is raising us up to lord over our white brother. Nope. I believe that God is raising us up to lead them to his presence. Yes. And I think that we, this unique body of men that he has placed in the United States of America, have been su selected, even as Simon Sarin was selected, to finish the run this dispensation to push this gospel all the way to the hill until the Lord returns. It's time for us to raise up and push Christ. Exactly. Uh, and I truly believe that that's what the preparation is for. It would be foolish of us to believe that us of color are the only ones that are exactly. in the position that we are in as, right. as this group of people um, right. in this in this uh this particular chat room, yes, I'm sure there are Caucasian brothers that are doing the same thing yes, that sir. we're doing and getting the same words from God. I just can't imagine, you know, it not be, not being so. Uh, the truth is the truth, and the spirit is the spirit, and um, and God is here to reach the world, not not a race. 
but the world. And uh, I just truly believe that, that, that there is going to be some great movements in the body of Christ uh, once these people are able to get out and, and start moving uh, like before. There, there is a conditioning that takes place that God prepares in the fullness of time. Jesus Christ himself even had to be prepared for his ministry. It took him 90% of his days on the planet to get ready for 30 years to get ready for a 10 year ministry. There's a process that people go through in preparation for service to the Lord. How that process is orchestrated has a lot to do with how we approach things. But Israel wasn't brought into bondage just for the sake of putting Israel in bondage. When Israel was prepared in bondage to serve God once she came out, Israel was taken through the desert so that she would be purged of all the things that she had been polluted by while she was in bondage. And so there is a process that God goes through to prepare people to, for his service. And I, I don't think anything that happens to us is arbitrary. The one thing we cannot say is that our white brother did not propagate the gospel of the kingdom. They did. The first person I remember preaching the gospel was Billy Graham. And he was fervent about that for 97 years while he was on the planet. I heard the gospel preached first from the white guy. And the people that I, I followed when I came into this thing were white. Um, they have done a tremendous job to a point of pushing this gospel forward. My 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 chagrin and, and my my I guess my my I guess my disappointment in a sense is that we have not been as perfect as a people. And, and I believe that as a people identified as African Americans in America, we have an obligation to the God that brought us to and through this thing to fervently go out after go after him. Yes, sir. And I and I pray God that we do as an identifiable body of believers begin to push this gospel. Right. Because right now I think I remember being pushed homosexuality, uh, uh, abortion, rap music, dropping our pants, thugging. That's what we seem to have been, you know, we've been identified with the people that were brought out of bondage, the people that were brought out from under the confines of uh, 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 the restraints of Jim Crow and lynchings and all of that. These are the same people identifiable in the United States as African Americans. And when we got that freedom, we went toward Islam. A lot of the movement right now among us now is toward Islam. We're being deceived again and, and being drawn off into this black Israelite thing. But we've not fervently, and as a body of believers, gone toward the Lord Jesus. Well, I think, and, I, and I believe that. And, and I'm gonna say, we're called to preach the good news, right? The good news about bringing everybody together. And if it's the good to close out, I want Brother Addison, I need to use the Brother uh, Elders, Mike, and sometimes that's helping a bit. Could you read, please, the chapter two, 13 through 22, uh, here it is. Because God is trying to get us all together. You got something else? Yes. Your Mac is. Says, you know, no, I understand that. Okay, go ahead, Brother Adams. 13 to 22? Yes, sir. Ephesians 2, 13. Now in Christ Jesus, ye sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Yeah. For he is our peace, well, who hath made both one on. and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Between us. Uh -huh. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, well, for to make in himself of twain one new man, come on. so making peace. Peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body one by body. the cross, having cross. slain the enmity thereby. Yes, sir. Excuse me. And came and preached peace to you, which huh. were far off. Yes, sir. And to them that were not. Come on. For through him we both have access by one spirit what? to the Father. Come on. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, uh -uh. The fellow citizens with the saints saint? and of the household of God Woo. and are built upon the foundation of the apostles yeah. and prophets and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone yes, in whom all the buildings fitly framed together uh -huh. 
fitly framed together. Come on. Groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Yes, sir. In whom ye also are built together for, yes. an, in for an habitation of God through the Spirit. All together. The good news is I'm trying to bring you all together. And I want you fitly framed. Huh? You you yeah. you were stuck you were partitions of each one another. You have to get unified for out of the vision. God for all of us as one, not separate. And he's saying we will many of us will work water and stranger to the covenant of promise. And he's trying to say whether you're Jew or Greek, whether you're bond or free. You are one way. In Christ. I see them. Amen. But it, it, it says in the old, it said he made of, of one blood all people. All so people. there was unity from the beginning. In Adam, we were all one. Uh -uh. And we all came out of Adam. And in Christ, we were brought back into one. Come on. Uh, so so there, there's this unity of, it said it would, that when Christ prayed for us, he prayed that we would be one with the Father. He, he and the Father were one, we'd be one with each other. So yeah. there's a unity that's, that we're achieving. The steps toward that unity are identifiable, and then they're kind of distinct. And, and in some situations, seem as though they're bigoted or, 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 or even, even you know, uh, segregationist because the Jews were identified and separated from the rest of the world in order that they might bring the Messiah into the world so that this man, Jesus, could be identified more readily through his lineage. So we can't say there are a lot of Christ out there, there are a lot of Jesuses in the world. But there's only one that came through that Jewish nation by so forth and so forth and so forth and so on. But yeah, Amen. The that he was gonna bring to me. He's in the wheelchair, I'm sorry, bro. This man, Christ, here that cross of the hill, his name was Simon. Yeah. He was identified as a white. Why is it really that building the church people? And I don't think it's because of our uh, ultimate you know, condition whether we're going to be saved or not, or that the kingdom is not going to be furthered by some another. But he's identifying his works so that we can continue on in the path. Because we, it's like little, we call them milestones, milestones. A little indicators, a little little hedges, a little things. Okay, you're heading in the right direction. This way to this, this way to this. And I think he's giving it. Yeah. We are. You said at the beginning of the study, in the, in, the, in all of the world. We are one of the most unique bodies of believers on the planet. Uh -huh. They don't treat Africans the way that we got treated. We were humbled in this situation, man. We were brought to our knees by slavery. We were humbled before man and God. And a lot of us got out of the situation that we in because we were ready to leave somebody to help us. Amen. Hey, right. Listen to another person your life, all your life. When you think you've been running it, but see, we have a tendency to want to hear from somebody but to figure out if they can be better off than the other thing that we do. We had to stop looking at extra and not speak Amen. Amen. I'd like to give a shout out. Okay. I told totally, totally unrelated, but it's on my mind. I want to say I want to give a shout out. One to uh to Brother Weaver, man. I didn't know that brother could sing like that, man. It looked like he could blow a trumpet too. I can't wait to hear him blow that trumpet, man. But man, that 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 made me smile all day, man. Do what you do, brother. Do what you do. Yeah. Because yeah. you can dance your saying, bro. I got yeah. guarantee you in my heart. I know you can blow that trumpet too. And I would love to hear you get out and get out. And then to leave. Leave. I'm reading that rape of the mind, bro. I'm reading that rape of the mind, man. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Yes, sir. <laughs> I heard you say, but the pastor put you on, let you sing a little bit. Oh, it look like I saw some type of advertising that you and this other guy is going to be doing something, oh, yeah, like yeah. a little concert or something. I saw you holding the trumpet in your hand, yeah. and I saw him holding the instrument, I think a trumpet as well. And yeah. I said, man, that brother can blow the trumpet too. Would love to hear your man do what you do. Yeah. yeah. That's my wife, That's brother. That's <laughs> 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 so we can't we can't destroy white people here. Yeah, I have to leave him down the field. He said we can't destroy him. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. I have a I have a CD by my brother Johnson. You do? Okay. You do. I gotta find it somewhere. I got I got a Christmas uh a oh, Christmas yeah, CD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm y'all y'all one. Yeah. You need to share that. You need to share that, man. <laughs> you 
Yeah, you dip, you dip, you enjoyed it. That's why I put you on that video. You, you yeah. Ever heard of but I tell you that that rape of the mind, man. You know, I've always been one that's been astonished by mind control and be human behavior and, and and the change effect, how to affect change in people. And so uh it goes back to a lot of historical stuff, a lot of wartime stuff, uh witchcraft and all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna tell you, I've only read maybe the first couple of chapters and so far. But man, I'm gonna tell you something. That kind of book right there intrigues me. That's a very good book because I understand just so much of what we do is tied to our mind. And that's why the Bible says to guard your heart with all diligence because out of it, which is that subconscious mind, flows the issues of life yeah. and it dictates everything. And so the more we can understand, because a lot of people, we don't understand the media and manipulation uh -huh. and inundation of knowledge and mind control and politics, but that's everything. And that's why the Bible teaches, I think it believes that there's only one mediator between yes. God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus, because he places a lot of emphasis on your source of information because he knows what it's going to do to your mindset. And mm -hmm. once I got your mind, I got everything. Hitler said it. You give me a child the first five, six, seven years of his life, and I own that child for the rest of his life because I have indoctrinated him and brought him to a level of mental conditioning that I can trigger what I want to trigger. And a lot of times we we don't we discount the effects of that mindset, man. And we have to understand that because it's everything in my opinion. Well, I think that's been indoctrinated, right? Most of that's the issue. Most of people have been conditioned through generations. Of, of defeat, separation. Great word, condition. That's what the Bible says. We do it in your mind, right? We have to renew our mind. Now we're conditioned to feminism, homosexuality, same sex marriage. We didn't change our stance on it, even as Christians. What we used to thought was repulsive and we speak against and said was abomination. Now we say, well, you know. God accepts everything, and you know, I, whatever they do in their bedroom, it don't bother me. But we we never said stuff like that before. But because now every commercial, yeah, I mean, even commercials about different drugs, about whatever, it could be in the twelve o'clock in the noon, one o'clock at night, it doesn't matter. Two men kissing two men, it's become so commonplace. Not just that violence, not just that the calling of each other degrading names and women and disrespecting them. Not just homosexuality. I speak against every aspect that brings men down to a level of just uh, just, just pawns because it's like sheeple being trained and programmed and, and conditioned to think a certain way, to live a certain way, to behave a certain way. And all of that is mind control. And I don't think we place enough emphasis on understanding mind control. And it really is mind control, but that's what the media does. And that's why I think it's so important. Uh, Pastor, you and I have often talked. Some of us would be a whole lot better if we were, if we were born blind Woo! and never seen things because we couldn't cover certain things. A lot of us would be better born, better off if we were born deaf, that we couldn't hear a lot of stuff because then now it wouldn't have any effect on us whatsoever. And in a sense, that's what he's asking us to do because the friend of the world, come on now, the Bible says that an enemy of God Yes, and we don't, we don't want, we think that, we know, we, we, some of us know more about the news, sports, with the, the society, all that kind of stuff, than we know about the Bible. Exactly. Right. But here's, here's something to think about. I think what that, what that book and a couple other books I've read got me to really consider is how the mind works. Mm -hmm. See, most of us don't understand how the mind works. And because we don't understand how the mind works, we will write off a lot of stuff as, as if it has no effect on us. But to see, in, 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 the, in, in the movie, The Matrix, Morpheus says that, what, that, that the mind takes a thought and try to make it real. Yeah. Woo. And Jesus said in the parable, if you put a seed in the soil, you can forget about talking about it and it ain't gonna come up. <laughs> if you plant that seed in the soil, that seed is gonna try to sprout. Oh yeah. Wow. And our mind is the same way. You let stuff in, don't think it ain't gonna have no effect on you. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Amen. And, and, and that's one of my 
one of my favorite movies because it has a lot of biblical principles in it. How you spell the Matrix. That? How you spell that book? I agree. It's a mind thing. It is about the mind. What, yeah. that, that book is called. Jim, I, rape of the mind. Is it actually rape? Like, mm-hmm. Rape of the mind. And Just put it in PDF. You can get it for free. Okay. Uh, all right. Check it out. Is it audio book or not? Okay. All right, Elder, you got the uh, you got the million ready for it. This is my body, which shall be broken for you. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So you fast the bread, they break it, and they ate it. disciples and said, hey, drink, all of you, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It shall be shed for you and for all men, so that sins may be forgiven. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So they took the cup and they drank. Out. After the supper, they went into the garden. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. 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 Amen.